If you boil dogs alive and you pay children a dollar twenty-five or three twenty-five a day, if you allow women to be beaten or they require four witnesses for rape, f you. We don't need to listen to you. You don't get a seat at the international bargaining table. Let's talk about this right yeah. now. Everything wrong with China, and not just uh, as a part of this pandemic right now. Right. But I think if nothing else, this has sort of lifted the veil for a lot of people to realize, like, hey. As far as international trade goes, as far as the agreements, they're not necessarily our friends mm -hmm. in every country. Doesn't mean they're necessarily enemies. I don't want to be the you should you should be American by American. I, I mean, have you have you driven a Volt? <laughs> Good point. I don't I don't even know that they have you can't force that. On I don't people. even know that I mean, they have a AAA in Japan. <laughs> you just you call a guy and he down, shows yeah. up. Hey, uh, buy a Toyota. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Not a mechanic. Salesman. He's on my card. <laughs> um, so, point is, now that I said that, we can dump on China. So, there listen, yes. Donald Trump has been trying to sound the alarm, uh, particularly as it relates to international trade on China, for quite some time. I'd like to have you take a look at the fentanyl that's coming out of China and Mexico. Major Chinese drug traffickers for to strip, and they have uh, really put very, very strong uh, clamps on them. They've indicted them. When Cuomo they charge nipple clamps, twenty-five <laughs> percent for, percent for a car to go in, and we charge two percent for their car to come into the United States. That's not good. We've uh, taxed China on three hundred billion dollars worth of goods and products being sold into our country. He said he was going to stop fentanyl from coming into our country. It's all coming out of China. Now, uh, wow. usually I understand, and I've talked about this, I don't like the idea of tariffs because it's a tax passed on to the consumer. Mm -hmm. However, right. there is a valid point when you do have countries, in, in, and it's no longer equitable. If they are taxing our yeah. goods going over, because right? yeah, as, yeah. as more libertarians, we, we agree, like, listen, we shouldn't be just putting a tariff on to punish a country, but right. if they are punishing us, we, there really isn't a, a fair international trade agreement, and I think, and no one, no one, by the way, Bernie Sanders talked about this, Hillary, the Clintons talked about this a long time ago, I know NAFTA, we can go into Bill Clinton, but if you listen to Hillary Clinton's rhetoric, but certainly Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump's the first person to do anything as it relates to trade. That's not what we're talking about today, but it has sort of fostered an environment with this festering pustule that has become the Chinese communist government. China this week, they reopened the wet markets that uh, were Yay. allegedly wow. the source wow. of all this. And by the way, allegedly. they're still selling bats, dogs, and uh, cats. And I want to be clear, and I okay. tried to be really careful, by the way, I want to warn you, we're not showing anything graphic as far as videos, but to me yeah. it's still disturbing. It's really hard for me to do any of the animal stuff. So yeah. uh, let me describe it for you and then tell you you're not going to see anything other than, than dogs and cages at the market. Okay, wet markets allegedly, from what we understand, created the virus. And now, while the rest of the world is still going through the pandemic, they reinstated them. To understand the severity of that, imagine the United States removing all the social distancing guidelines and then banning soap. That's how That's severe bringing back yeah, the wet markets so. can be. Mm. No hygiene standards. The cruelty, though, is it, it's over the top. Dogs are kept in cramped cages, and then, I'm not going to show it, but then they're boiled alive. I want to uh, warn you, it's not yeah, graphic, but the following footage will uh, make you angry. We had to cut it short because yeah. that's all we can there show was, there was more. There was more. without you guys getting cut. super, super pissed. Yeah. Now, now, Bill, what does wet market mean? I don't mean to ask you specifically. Well, you know, it's yeah, interesting. You do mean you precisely do, really, to yeah. ask him I specifically. Do, I think you do. And you're yeah. asking the Asian half, so it'll be a good okay. answer. Yeah. So um, I'll get it accurate. So, so what, what people have always understood wet markets to be and what they've always been described as is the wet refers to the blood. Yeah. People are going to be skinning the animals alive or butchering them live on the street in front of the customers. And, the, and like wet work, a military term, you know, uh, assassinations and that type yeah. of thing, it refers to the blood that's involved. But now, actually, people are trying to swing the other way to try to counter the racism of just the facts of the situation of how these wet markets exist. There was an LA Times article came out either today or yesterday that tried to say, well, uh, it's not actually referring to the blood and the butchering. It's just referring to the fact that they hose the ground off and the ground is wet. Oh, in the okay. Uh, Question. Right. So what the they, ground is hosing? now wet with the blood of the animals yeah. that were yeah. killed alive because apparently that makes them more delicious. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Lest you think that these wet markets exist in the countryside because you think, oh, it's got to be removed. No, the Wuhan area where these wet markets, it's a 15 million person city right. center. It's like yeah. putting it in downtown New York, right? right? It's right. around everybody that's packed together. So it's not like an isolated thing out in the country you can right. go to. No, I mean, and it, just so you know the numbers, I mean, it's 
tens of thousands of markets, oh, yeah. white markets. Oh, yeah. I mean, at, at its peak, before right. they started shutting them all down, which was not long ago, months ago, we're talking right. about, um, there were tens of thousands of these markets. And even in, not just in the quote unquote rural provinces, which is a good point, Gerald. I mean, these are multiple million person cities. Yeah. Yeah. But even in Shanghai or Beijing or in the suburbs around those towns, they have those wet markets. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's again, it's not just the idea of a butcher, right? Like we have butchers here and maybe sure. they do live butchering, but it's the proximity of wild animals all together combined with the hygiene and the mixing that creates the huge problem that we right. have here. Yeah. So let's go through a few points here that I think matter in, in relation to China. And, and half Asian, Bill, you, know, you can half correct me wherever I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> but only half. The wet markets, they're not only where coronavirus started, also SARS. Yeah. Let's let's be clear about that. And, and those are just the diseases that originated specifically in the wet market. So all uh, many, not all, but many different strains of bird flu, mm -hmm. case swine flu, they spread in these markets. They didn't. They weren't created necessarily in these markets, but this is where right. they spread, Easily and they spread, led to yeah. repeated outbreaks. They shut down these markets during. They shut them down during the SARS outbreak, during the uh, H7N9, which I don't necessarily remember. It was yeah. oh, that was bird, that, bird that was flu. that's right. Yeah. That's a bird uh, flu. We knew about bird flu. That's yeah. right. We knew about bird yeah. flu. That was a pandemic. I heard it was. And it was. Uh, now coronavirus. So what's most important to me is they shut them down, right? So this disease spreads. They shut down the wet markets. I get right away. Everyone yeah. shut down wet market. Okay, and then they reopen them. So they know yeah. that it's happening yeah. there. And right now it's extra dickish because the pandemic <laughs> is still spreading across the globe and they yeah. are already reopening them. Like, can't you wait until the bodies have assumed room temperature in Italy and Spain and the United States before you yeah. reopen what you knowingly had uh, as, created as an incubator to, to, to create the proliferation of this disease? Let's go down to some, some other dangerous things that have been going. The research. Okay, so if the yeah. wet markets weren't bad enough, Chinese government, they've been conducting all kinds of viral research. Oh, yeah. Right, they've been, they isolated and worked with over 2,000, I want to make sure, yeah, over 2,000 new viruses, including bat coronaviruses, just three miles from the Wuhan market. And you were saying, actually, some of them are 1.2 kilometers. It was 1.2 kilometers away. Wa uh, Washington Times put up there what? that it was three, but I, I actually just Google Earthed it. But the Chinese government, or somebody, fr removed from Google the listing of where that That's is. interesting. I would like to know why there's that huh. discrepancy. Yeah. I wonder if it's the way of the bird. Uh, no. So 1.2 kilometers faster? walking. Really? Walking, you can look it up right now. Well, I don't want to look it up right I'm now. I'm just saying, like, it's the people at home can oh, look it I'll up I'll trust right you now. over Washington you Times. Should, you should definitely do that. But to give you, okay, to give you an idea, when people say, they're, they're researching viruses, deadly viruses, call it three miles to be generous. Yeah. If it's 1.2 yeah. kilometers, that's about half a mile. That's close. That's crazy. That'd be like growing organic turnips next to Area 51. Yeah, that's not a good idea. There, it's not a good idea no <laughs> matter. alien turnips. And this isn't a race thing, it's a bad idea thing. Yeah. Don't study deadly viruses next to where people <laughs> eat live things. Yeah. So this is important. We're not just pointing out cruelty because we don't like it. No, cruelty actually does have a dramatic effect on the health of these animals and the immune system. Like pe course, people want to yeah. talk about factory farming in the United States. That's why they have to inject it with all kinds of antibiotics because they're close proximity. Your dog is dirt. Your dog is filthy enough. They lick their crotch and then try and lick your face. Like I yeah. get it. And kind of when it's your own dog, most people are fine with it. I understand. But that's not what's happening with these dogs. When you put them in a cage and they're basically yeah. being abused their entire lives, they are going to be uh, more fertile carriers for disease. And yeah, to give you, yeah. just so you know, this isn't necessarily, and I think every, everything that you've all said here is reasonable. And now I'm starting to think, yeah, biological warfare. But I would never claim that. But in 2013, we wouldn't say Chinese that. researchers they created a mutated strain of the uh, the bird flu in their attempts to make this is this is quote wow. attempts to make strains in a lab that would, if accidentally released or used for nefarious purposes, pose a potentially global health threat. Now I'm saying they were just Nailed saying it's a possibility. They weren't they weren't like playing it coy like oh whoopsie can't yeah. go up <laughs> bird flu for you. Yeah. They were just saying that hey if this were to happen. It would be really bad. Yeah. And they were acknowledging that we're doing all of these things that hopefully this, like, have you seen Jurassic Park one through five? <laughs> uh, uh, Rife uh, finds a way. Um, <laughs> by the way, hit the notification bell if you are not subscribed or not joining Mug Club despite Mug Club quarantine month. Uh, hit all notifications. Yeah.
And uh, of course, subscribe to Credit Bits. We have new videos that go up every night at 9 p.m. Eastern anyway, here on YouTube. So there's always yes. a clip on YouTube, you just always. don't get the full show. Here's another thing that I think is pretty important when we're talking about China, and because the media is not doing it, they're carrying their water. I'll tell you why. I think the media are, com I think the media are communist sympathizers. I'm not gonna walk that uh, back at all right now. <laughs> no. Uh, but I'll circle back to that, because unless you shut it off, I just did advertise colloidal silver and say that they were commies. Um, <laughs> let's get to the, the, the masks, the test kits, the, the equipment, right? Here's the thing. There's been th They've not been honest. We now know this when it comes yeah. to medical testing, right, with the yeah. coronavirus. Now everyone is acknowledging that. We were throttled on YouTube for saying you cannot trust the numbers coming out of China right now. We didn't yeah. say that they are flat out wrong, but you can't trust them no. yet. And of course, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, they decided to redirect all of these kinds of statements to more authoritative sources, some of which were directly from the Chinese Communist government. Oh, we'll come back oh. to that. Um, the, by the way, Donald Trump said, we're not taking the masks. Everyone gave him crap for it. The Netherlands, yeah. they had to recall 600,000 wow. faulty masks from China. The latest test kits from Spain, wow. they only work 30% <laughs> of the time. Same for the kits, oh. uh, Turkey. Yeah, country after, they are scrambling to try and dump some of these bad Chinese products that are destroying the chances of taking uh, the coronavirus out or at least containing it. Here, think, and think about this for a second. Take all the numbers from these countries and then add potentially 30%. Yeah. When you're talking about the infection rates. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah, the only absolutely. country that doesn't have that right now. We have more accurate testing right now. Yeah. And now we're doing more and more testing by the day. The fact, I was shocked. I had to double check this and have read your research. A 30% failure rate? You might not even, you might wow. not even take yeah, that that's, test. That's insane. Would you use a condom with a 30% failure rate? <laughs> yeah. That's a high well, It only worked 30% of the time. That's what he's saying. So it's a 70% failure oh. rate is what they had. Oh, they only work it's for the only, I mean, They only work 30% of the Well, the, the time. problem is I'm so anti-Chinese, I can't do math. Well, no, that would be bad enough. If it had a 30% failure worse. rate, we'd be up in arms. It was 70% failure rate. 70%. So. Wow. And the Chinese government in Spain, basically, the embassy said, well, uh, they just they weren't licensed to make the product, so, so our bad. Yeah. <laughs> so that was their defense yeah. of the entire our thing. Bad. Also, the baby food, <laughs> uh, asbestos. Might want to avoid that for a while. The best buy date, <laughs> not really relevant. It's all bad. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they do have a history, by the way, of, of, of sometimes China exporting goods that uh, I was making a joke about that poisonous toothpaste, yeah. that toxic children's toys, yeah. unsafe tires, all of which had to be recalled. Now, I want to be really clear. Not all, chi not all Chinese goods are no. bad and not all American goods are good. So, and by the way, if there's an American manufacturer out there who can actually create a quality mug for us, we would love to yeah. work with you. It just has to be at a reasonable rate and decent quality at that time we could only find American Union made mugs and it was more expensive so we said we'll bring it in from a company that tests chemically tests their uh, yeah. their uh, their products and now we have Americans who are etching it and painting it so it created more jobs but if there is there an American go. manufacturer who can make this kind of a mug we would love to partner with you yeah. and if you want a big old fat contract amid th uh, amidst this pandemic there are a lot of new mug club signups, so Give us a call. thank yes. all of you. So. I pray to God, and I mean it, that we see an armed insurrection from the Chinese people against those commie bastards at some point in our lifetime. <laughs> they got to overthrow them. Eventually. Are you encouraging violence uh, for the people who are being Oppressed held hostage? On the people who have all of a sudden disappeared? Whistleblowers, right? Several mm. doctors now. Yeah. One tried to blow the whistle on the masks. She's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think some people need to defend themselves right now. I think people need to rise up and hopefully the international community, rather than being paralyzed by political correctness, will say, you know what? You know what? These people, not the government, these people deserve the same rights that we have in France, in Spain, in Italy, in the United States. So you know what, Chinese government, because we sympathize with your people, f off. How about that? Some at some yeah, point I would like to hear we that. need to do that. I'd love to hear that press conference. Here's another point. Fentanyl. Is it fentanyl or fentanyl? Fentanyl. I, I have no, no idea. Fentanyl. Well, then, no. both. Okay, because I, ask my I wife. thought it was what the president said fentanyl, and I was like, oh, he's a president. I must be wrong. Then I realized, <laughs> not exactly. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> yeah, don't use that as a gauge. <laughs> the rate of fentanyl uh, related deaths has been doubling every year. Now almost 20,000 dying Jeez. each year. Main uh, destination for fentanyl, the United States. Main source of fentanyl, China. Now I know, and I know what you're thinking, and this is a valid point. You have Americans who make meth or synthesize opioids. That's absolutely true. But those people are not creating drugs that are effectively sanctioned or actually subsidized by the government and given tax breaks on exports as you see in China. Yeah, yeah, 
No, that actually happens. For context, just imagine Joe Exotic receiving a federal grant for a gay meth tattoo parlor tiger den. That's what's <laughs> oh, happening. Season two. <laughs> it's not that fentanyl, it's not that they're the only country with drugs. That's right. not my no, issue. Yeah. It's the government actually subsidizing and giving tax breaks wow. on fentanyl as an export. Fortunately, President Trump on all of these points, but particularly fentanyl as he pronounced it, he's been he's been pretty consistent, and I wish that more people listened on all of these points. They tax our goods going into China. It's a totally unfair deal. We've uh, taxed China on $300 billion worth of goods and products being sold into our country. The Chinese virus, it comes from China. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it for a second. Why were Washington Post, New York Times, Vox all saying the flu is something you should worry The coronavirus is not an issue. Don't worry about it. Now they try and act like it's a left-right thing. No, no, no. Yeah. You guys said not to worry about it because yeah. at that point you were parroting the World Health Organization talking points, who, by the way, were parroting the Chinese government talking points. Then, all of a sudden, when it was blamed on the United States that we weren't ready because we were trusting information from China and a Chinese foreign minister, who, by the way, was not throttled or censored by Twitter at all, but oh, no. Laura Ingram was for saying that the masks were faulty, which yeah. is true. Actually, no, she was censored because of the chloroquine thing. I think I was censored for saying the masks were faulty. <laughs> you know, well, you it's make so all so sh- <laughs> um, the issue was I saying before that? <laughs> was I talking about before that? Oh yeah, so the foreign minister again. The yeah. quickest, the Occam's razor here. Why would they say it's not a big deal? And then all of a sudden say it's a big deal and the right is wrong about it. For the same reason that they don't seem to have a problem with doctors and whistleblowers disappearing in yeah. China and they refuse to run the press briefings here in the United yeah. States from the White House. Here's a new rule. While we're talking about freedom of the press, you know what? It's not exactly communist China here if CNN refuses to run the press briefing and instead runs commentary on the press briefing that you don't get a seat or a press badge. Mm-hmm. How about that? How about once you stop parroting communist Chinese talking points, then maybe you get a seat at that table. It is remarkable to me that I can't think of any other time in American history but orange man bad that we have a president, commander in chief, who's going out there addressing the people directly. The president of the United States and the media is opting not to run it. Instead, running false propaganda that maybe they're not getting from the Chinese government, but it certainly would be congruent with the messages that the Chinese government is trying to put out there right now. When you look at reporters retweeting the foreign minister with conspiracy theories, for some reason they're still on there, but Alex Jones is not. This is the president of the, and something else that's remarkable, they go, oh, potentially 100,000 to 220,000 deaths from coronavirus. You know where you got those numbers? From Donald Trump's press briefing, right. dummy. But you didn't run it because you didn't want to include that we're getting hundreds of thousands of new masks. We're getting hundreds of thousands of masks that can be sanitized. The FDA approved the therapeutics that Donald Trump touted and you said he was wrong and crazy about. So what do they do? They don't run the press briefing. Instead, they run commentary on the press briefing while the Cuomos talk about their mom's pasta sauce and nipple rings. <laughs> and then they take the worst numbers from the press briefings and don't actually tell Americans about the positives. Listen, not all cultures are created equal. And and Donald Trump is right about this, just like Bernie Sanders was right about this. Americans should not have to compete with the child at a Nike factory who's working for a buck 50 a day. This is not, we can't be in an international economy if it's not fair. And you know what? When we're talking about this, not all cultures are created equal because I think that American exceptionalism is a good thing. And you know, if you you boil dogs alive and you pay children a $1.25 or $3.25 a day, guess what? You don't get a seat at the international bargaining table. And not just China, because not all cultures are equal. If you don't let your women drive, you don't get to sit and dictate any policy or even express your opinion here in the United States. If you allow women to be beaten or they require four witnesses for rape, you. We don't need to listen to you. We're not going to be on any committee or international agreement that you take part in. So let's start with China and then work our way down so that hopefully we can be the empire we've been accused of being and make the rest of the world the United States of America. Why? Because the Chinese and everyone else would be better off. Yeah, I know I got a little worked up there, uh, but there are videos playing in boxes here. So, so click those if you want to see more content. Hit the subscription button or hit the notification bell. Hit all notifications so you'll know when new videos come out. But hint, every weeknight at 9 p.m. Eastern, you can come in and see a video. And I just want to clarify, I know I got passionate, lest it be misconstrued as, as racist. Um, I do not have a problem in any way with the Chinese people. It's just the hats. <laughs>